Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we've already got critical reviews for Indiana Jones 5, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and it is not good. Not good yet. There's only 16 reviews, so I want to point that out. Well, yeah, but the consensus seems to be that the reaction at cons was not as good I, I as the I get it. Yes. Said. I get it. <laughs> but I'm just saying, to be fair, there is no audience score yet. There's only 14 reviews. So that could change for those idiots out there who are going to be like, you're wrong. You just hate Disney. Um, But right now, at this point in time, it's actually been going down. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to talk about this because if it, if it stays in the rotten... Uh, it's actually going to be worse. It's going to be worse than the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which I thought was like rock bottom Indiana Jones, right? Uh, this is this is not good. This is not a good sign for this movie. Will people come out to see the movie anyway just because they want to see Harrison Ford one last time? I don't know. I I really don't know. They're they're saying some blogs are saying this thing could make nine hundred million dollars worldwide just because it's Indiana Jones. It yeah. doesn't matter if it's bad Indiana Jones, right? And we don't know. We don't know. So we're going to talk about the scores and the box office. I, pff, I have no idea. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, go out to piratesandprincesses.net for more objective, more objective Disney news. Go out to clownfishtv.com for more objective pop culture news. Uh, check us out on Rumble. We've been posting some videos occasionally on Rumble that we don't post here. That's right. Um, because, you know, we haven't changed. YouTube's changed. Some of the stuff we said three or four years ago, we can't say here anymore. You know? Yeah. So that's why we're doing it. So let's talk about this. This should be in both places. Indiana Jones and the Doll of Destiny currently sitting at 44% critical. I am shocked that they lifted the review embargo this early. I, I am too because it's not until June 30th. So we got more than a month as the movie comes out? Yeah, usually Disney waits until like a week or two before because they don't want to poison the well, especially if the reaction was not good. Now, the initial story, as I recall, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but the uh, initial story was that it got this massive standing ovation at the Cannes Film mm -hmm. Festival, and it was like the most amazing thing ever. But it turns out that the applause was not for the movie. The applause was for Harrison Ford. Right. Because he's getting up there, and we don't know how much longer we're going to have Harrison Ford. Yeah, so um, I hope to God we get a lot more Harrison Ford and a lot less Indiana Jones. Um, so this is coming from Showbiz 4, 411. Indiana Jones' Doll of Destiny opens and cause to, to tepid, tepid applause. Bad reviews, but Harrison Ford dazzles nonetheless. So he's okay. They said the first hour is okay when it's mostly him. You know, uh, they said even though Indiana Jones and the Doll of Destiny got tepid applause... Everybody else is like, it's amazing. It's like a 15-hour standing ovation, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's the most amazing movie ever. Ford got, Ford, Ford but got ovations. When started, they they were standing ovations for him. Everyone loves him and he still has it. Okay, update. There are eight filed reviews. Now there's like 16 on Rotten Tomatoes. From the few critics allowed in last night's screening. So far, the score is 50% in Rotten. It dropped down to like 30-something and then it went back up to 44 yeah, so this is um this is Rotten Tomatoes roundup of it. Even Variety was like Indiana Jones Five gets lukewarm five minute cons ovation, as Harrison Ford says an emotional goodbye. Again, this it's was not about the movie; it's about him. It's about him. They, this is the last time he's going to play the character. Well, the last, last, last time he's going to play the character. Now wait, how many times has he said goodbye to Indiana Jones? Let's see. We had uh, Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. He said goodbye to the character. We had uh, The Last Crusade. The Last Crusade, he said goodbye to the character. We had Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. He said goodbye to the character. And now we've got this one. Yeah, but I think at this point... This is the, the last goodbye. Yeah. Unless they bring him back with AI. Well, that's true. That is true. So, um, but yeah, so he got an ovation for that, guys. It's not that the movie's good. Um, a lot of the reviews, not good. Indiana Jones still has a certain old school class. Okay. Uh, James Mangold brings the character's adventures to a satisfying close. Let's just go look at the Rotten Tomatoes actual reviews, because sometimes they pick and choose a sentence out of a review. Here's the actual reviews. Now, again, I, I, just to be fair, I want to be fair. There's only 14 so far. We haven't seen all of it. And we know that just because the critics say something sucks doesn't mean the audience says it's going to suck. It would not have a feeling the audience is also going to say it's going to suck. I, anyway. I, yeah, I think especially I've heard some of the dialogue 
yes. in this movie. And um, oh, I saw somebody said, oh, one of the articles said about every time that she gave off one of her one-liners, you know, that people would groan and people in the audience were speaking in French about how bored they were. Oh, my God. So congratulations. You've become the new Fleabag has become the new uh, Shia LaBeouf. You know, so they were remember when they were going to pass the mantle. That was the thing like, hey, we're going to pass the mantle to Shia LaBeouf. But uh, he didn't get that hat at the end of the last one because he wasn't stable enough for it. Um, so we got uh, Daily Beast. The de-aging and other CGI manipulations of Ford's body only served to demonstrate the doll of destiny just wants to turn back the clock instead of doing anything new. Uh, this one says Harrison Ford finds a fitting end to one of cinema's greatest action heroes. OK, well, that sounds good. It's a vast step up from the muddied mess of Crystal Skull. Well, that's not saying much. Yes, well, it's not perfect and has uneven storytelling. It's not bad. It's not a bad end for our favorite archaeologist, Professor Adventurer. This is the fourth ending. <laughs> it's gotten it's a sad and safe ending. Okay, okay. So hopefully the rumors are not true about the ending. And can, spoiler alert, potential spoiler alert. You've been warned. You've been warned. Uh, there was a rumor going around that basically Fleabag is going to go back and do everything that Indiana Jones was supposed to do using time travel, wearing his hat. So, I thought they changed that. I, thought I think they great. refilmed the end. If that was the original ending, that was a fucking stupid idea. You know, and I hope they changed it. I hope they give him a proper send off. If nothing Yeah, I, hope, I thought they changed that, but I don't know. It could be wrong. We won't know. Uh, let's see. Indiana Jones and the Doll of Destiny may not be the finest film of the franchise, but it's far from the worst. Okay. Indiana what if they sad ending? I keep thinking they're going to kill him. Oh, my God. Indiana Jones and the Doll of Destiny is a bold, bright, and blazingly fun reunion. Uh, it's an improvement over Crystal Skull, but James Mangold's uh, exhuming the body of the Spielberg, Spielberg adventure serial is both tame and unnecessary. No, it's necessary. It's unnecessary. Disney needs money. Well, Badly. that was the wrong choice. That was the wrong choice. The, the jokes, the zest, and the exuberance just aren't there. So instead of a joyous send-off for our beloved hero, we get a depressing reminder of how much livelier his past adventures were. People said the first hour is actually pretty okay. And then after that, as soon as she shows up, it just goes to hell. Well, doesn't she, was she one of the writers on this one? I think she was, Cause yes. I, yeah, because she, she ruined Bond, too. She ruined Bond, too, yeah. Yeah. This is a big, bombastic movie that goes through the motions but never finds much joy in the process. Uh, India Jones' and Donald Destiny is, is dutifully eager but ultimately joyless. Oh, it's boy. Nostalgic hokum. That's variety. Um, yeah, so this one said, thanks, India. It's been quite a ride. One can feel the four credited screenwriters grasping at inspiration and coming up short. What they did manage to make would be perfectly fine as a standalone adventure film starring some other character, but it's not worthy of the whip. Not Vanity Fair. Um, the good news is not as poor as Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The bad news is it's not much better. If you join them for the ride, it feels like a fitting goodbye to cinema's favorite grave robber. This, sound, this feels like they're robbing the grave at this point. Wait, 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 wait. This grave ranks robber. up there with her talking about, you know, making that comment about him stealing stuff from, indigenous from his people, people which yeah. he never did. No, he actually returned. He returned artifacts to their rightful owners. He said things belonged in the museum. No, Indiana Jones was the good archaeologist. He wasn't yeah. doing it for profit. He wasn't doing... No, that's... that's. Well, of course, this guy would, would love it when he calls him a grave robber. So that's a right grave, up his alley. A grave robber. Yesterday belongs to us, someone says. And when it comes to Indiana Jones, yesterday always will. The problem is that it already did. And today feels like a complete waste of time. Well, that's Indie Wire. So these are like the big wow. ones, guys. And they're even saying, what the fudge? Uh, this is the best thing they can say. Indiana Jones still has certain old school class... Harrison Ford is the hero of the hour. He never loses either his scowl or his doggedness. Um, he plays even the flimsiest scenes with conviction and dry humor. His performance carries oh, the I, movie. I'm sure of it. He was good in Crystal Skull, too, even when it, it, they nuked the fridge, you know? It ultimately feels like a counterfeit of priceless treasure. The shape oh. and the gleam of it might be superficially convincing for a bit, but the shabbier craftsmanship gets all the more glaring the longer you look. Ouch. Well, you know, Spielberg wasn't involved in this one, but Spielberg was involved in Crystal Skull. Yeah. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. If it's worse than the Crystal Skull, that's that's bad. <sighs> well, so far it's it's uh rated worse than But it's early Crystal and people Skull. and this is only for the few people who saw it at Cannes. This isn't not the, the cons. This is not the new you know, the whole the whole story. So some of these aren't um on Rotten Tomatoes are not easy to find. The, oh wow. Yeah, this is this is why I wanted to pull these up. 
Um, so they did have some of these, but they said that uh, nobody with a brain in their heads will compare Dial of Destiny favorably to the first three films. Uh, oh, yeah. I saw Irish Times kind of ripped it. I saw it yesterday. Yeah. An empty slog of a movie. We, I think we covered that one. Yeah, I don't think we I don't think we covered the Irish Times. Nobody in their nobody with a brain in their heads will compare Dial of Destiny to the first three films. There's no reason to make any more of these movies. Speaking of no reason to make movies, why the fuck did Hulu do another White Men Can't Jump? Can Hollywood Hollywood, especially Disney, do anything that isn't a rehash of some property they got out of that stupid Fox acquisition? And they wonder why they have to sell shit off and they're failing. It's like they're making direct to DVD cheap cools to every damn thing that nobody wanted. Yes, I'm like, yeah. no one cares. Yeah. Or reboots or whatever, reimaginings. Stop. Just stop. Nobody wants this. Same with Indiana Jones 5. Just stop. It's like a cheap cash grab because you're desperate for money. We got Lucas somehow to make our money back quick to another indie film. Well, that's that's another video that's coming up after this one. How desperate Disney is for money at this point. Uh, they're having a, a garage sale, basically. Mm -hmm. a Disney Plus garage sale. But yeah, they're saying that this one, they think it might actually do... $950 million worldwide. It might, though, because people really love Indiana Jones. And honestly, I mean, this is this is the thing. I, I have given up on trying to predict box office takes for these movies because Jurassic World Dominion was pretty terrible, from what I've heard, and it still made a ton of money. Mm -hmm. Just because people are like, oh, it's the whole you know, cast of the original Jurassic Park all together one last time. Let's go see it. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they're going to do. And that's what they're going to go see this because when else are you going to see Indiana Jones on screen again? Probably never. Even though they are releasing the first movie in theaters, I think this month ahead of it. And then I know they're putting all the, the Indiana Jones movies on Disney Plus ahead of the this movie coming out. Trying to get people to, to have interest in it. Trying to, yeah. Hey, remember Indy? Remember Indy? Yeah, you like Indy. Yeah, he's not dead yet. We killed Han Solo. Now, this is a different guy. This is the guy with the hat. Yeah, this is the one. You want to go see this, right? Please, for the love of God, go see this movie. And, yeah. I mean, and it might do well. I'm not going to say it's not. I, it I mean, might. They, they keep really trying to ramp up the whole, uh, you know, and I think if they hadn't had his goddaughter be an insufferable bitch, it might do better. But I think she actually is a big part of why people are turned off. They're not going to say that, though. I'll say it. They're not going to. No, because I've, I've heard some of the dialogue comes out and she sounds... I'm going to say it. She sounds super woke for the 1960s and you, she wouldn't have talked that way, right? No. Unless she time traveled to 2021, got all that and then went back and then she, So like she know. ruined but James Bond, now she's going to ruin Indiana Jones. Yeah. Then she'll move on to something else to ruin after this. She's using the dial of destiny to dial in the Twitter from about two or three years <laughs> yeah, ago. That's, that's where all of her, her one-liners come from. Um, yeah, I, I just, I mean, that that whole storyline could have been... Plus they they they, they, they debuted right. it in France, and they said that the French audience was like, eh. What the hell? Because they're not they're not super far leftist, you know, people in America. A lot of countries are just think that they go too far over here, and they're full of shit. Yeah, it was kind of. I mean, I understand they're trying to match his age, what his age would have been, you know, in the movies since the original movies were in the '30s. But I'm like, I don't know if the '60s work for Indiana Jones. He's very much like a product of his time. The right, you know, the Pulp Fiction radio dramas, you know, that, that era. And then to put him in the 1960s is just kind of like, eh, yeah. really, do we have to do this? Do we really have to do this? And, Which is why they had to de-age him for a bunch of scenes. Yeah. It's like, but I'm like, he had an ending. We, we know, we know how it ends in the young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Now remember that episode, they had very freaking old Indiana Jones. He was missing an eye. So he better be missing an eye unless they time travel and get his eye back. But, but he was very, very, he was like 90 years old and he was just some old man that, rattle on about his adventures and that's how his story ended you know and we're gonna change all that whatever whatever oh yeah it doesn't matter just as disney got it they're just gonna do everything over again and do it worse and then claim that they're winning anyway can we please wrap this well, up because i don't think anybody cares at this point i don't know if, does anybody care about i forgot it was coming out oh i didn't even forget it was coming out but i'm just like eh. I'm yeah. not, and i'm sad i feel bad and i don't know about if you guys understand this but it's like people are like you just want to hate on things it's like no at this point it's just i'm just sad like i'm just it's just it's just it's just sad because it's like you see these things that you grew up with and these people that you well, want to sad because these actors are getting so old and we're going to lose them soon. And it's yeah. heartbreaking because you, you don't want to see your heroes be gone. That's one thing. But the other element of it, these are so important stories, important things that, that were like a major part of growing up and like, you know, oh, can't wait to see the in, new Indiana Jones movie or whatever. And in Star Wars and all those things. And they're just completely ruining them. 
And and then you're supposed to sit there. So you lose people twice in a way. You lose it twice. And it's like they think that they're doing good to ruin it for something else to move on to some other thing. And it's like, just stop. Just can't you just let it be like it was so you can remember it like it, they were? Yeah, I mean, this sounds morbid, but since we're talking morbid, it, it is, I can tell you as someone who's lost people, it is worse to see them decline than it is to just, I think in a lot of ways, it is to just lose them because your last memories of them are going to be suboptimal let's mm -hmm. put it that way yeah, well, right? sadly, that's how it works you know and so yeah i mean i'd rather remember indiana jones riding off with his dad in the end of the last crusade mm -hmm. than think about you know crystal skull which i haven't even thought about in years other than nuke the fridge is mm -hmm. that's literally the only thing this movie added to to pop culture was was nuke the fridge and this one i think is gonna be just as bad i guarantee you flea bag's gonna have oh she's gonna ruin some, it yeah yeah, she's going to be memeable. It's going to be... Bad. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll find out. We will find out. Uh, maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. Oh. Not thinking that's the case, but maybe. Nah. So let's wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.